Uh, hello, everyone, one more time. <laughs> it is uh, Arjo said, uh, my name is Dennis, and I'm a tech lead in a soft surf. Uh, and today I want to present you some maybe basic knowledge and my experience of using MongoDB and particularly indexes. Uh, I think most of you work on enterprise application and per my perspective, uh, there is a point to think about uh, efficient work with uh, data. Uh, according to Martin Fowler, enterprise application are about the display, manipulation, storage of large amount of often complex data. Uh, so let's start with this statement and uh, look at what instruments we have to solve our day-to-day -day challenges. Uh, uh, first of all, I wanna talk about databases at all uh, and what types of them we have. Uh, as Wikipedia says, a database is an organized collection of data. Uh, sounds simple enough, and in fact it is. Uh, one of the simplest uh, analog of databases is a real phone directory. I literally mean that big yellow book from the movies. Uh, and it's not without reason phone directory was once an example in every book about relational databases. Uh, we have an indexes by letter in it, also names and actual phone numbers. Uh, if we digitalize such a directory, uh, let's say in Excel, each record will additionally have its own serial number, in the case of Excel, the line number. Uh, in database terms, it will be called the primary key. The, within databases, the primary key is a unique identifier by which a database management system can be referred to uh, for data manipulation. And it's literally the first index type uh, that we already learned today. Uh, but let me correct myself. From the term terminology straight point, uh, in spite of the fact that we often talk about databases in the context of software development, uh, in fact, uh, it is the database management systems, DBMS, that is meant, uh, which already provides a programming interface uh, to the databases. Uh, but things are a little more complicated. In addition to the fact that each DBMS and their engines provide different algorithms for optimal data manipulation, replication, etc. DBMS are divided into types according to the data storage principle. Uh, so let's briefly review them. Uh, the most uh, widespread and having a separate class, uh, we can say that is, it's a de facto and de jure standard relational databases. Uh, why there the standard is beyond the scope of this conversation except for one detail related to the data access interface, namely the structure, structure query language SQL, uh, which at one time made this type of database uh, the standard. Uh, then we have a whole layer of DBMS that is called NoSQL. And this divided into four main types according to the principle of data storage. Uh, columns, key values, graphs, and documents. And MongoDB refers to the last one. In the context of uh, any DBMS indexes resemble the zip codes and the principle of mail. When you need to send a letter, you write the zip code and address on your mail. <coughs> if you do not specify the zip code when sending, uh, then your letter will go through the most non-optimal path. Starting from the marshalling station in your city where the city index is determined in which you send the letter after it is uh, delivered uh, to the central office, it will again go to the next marshalling station where it will already be given the index of the correct branch within the city. Uh, and only then, uh, will it go to the recipient? It is approximately the same with the databases. Indexes make it easier to find information due to the fact uh, that they store 
a list of pointers. Uh, roughly speaking, string numbers for each of the indexes. In the further example, I will image indexes as tables with columns and rows, just to simplify uh, the examples. But if you are familiar with, with algorithm and uh, data structures, there will not a big deal to convert these examples to an appropriate view. So. Uh, MongoDB stores indexes in B3 structure. And knowing this, you can achieve a better understanding on how you can utilize indexes in a proper way and how you can't. Of course, we will talk about it uh, a little bit later in the scope of best practices. So, uh, MongoDB supports six different index types and the same amount of the index properties. Uh, and I think let's briefly review them all before we jump to the best practices. Uh, let's first look at the most widely used uh, index types and understand their pur purpose. Hmm. Single field index is pretty simple, and the first single field index you might have if you are using MongoDB is the ID. It's as simple as it's called, so I think that's it for this index type. Uh, the compound index is also not such a complex thing. Uh, in MongoDB, you can make indexes for two or more fields. Uh, in collection compounded in one index. But there is one tricky thing related to it. Based on the fact Mongo uses uh, B3 as a data structure for storing indexes, the order and uh, sorting is matter. Uh, we will return to this statement further. Uh, and so based on the fact that Mongo documents are not structured and you can store arrays of any data, data types, uh, you also can build indexes for these arrays too. All these three types work out of the box and you don't need to specify any additional params to use it, J just creating indexes. Uh, moreover, you can build a compound multi-key indexes. But there is a restriction here. Uh, you cannot create a compound multi-key multi -key index if more than one uh, <coughs> field of a document is an array. It's a restriction of MongoDB. So on the next slide, I want to present you more special and rarely used index types. Here you can see the geo index type uh, that should help you if you're working with uh, these data. Mm. This index supports planar and spheral geometry. And it's important if we are talking about finding nearest location uh, of, uh, I don't know, uh, re real world object uh, is really depends on which geometry you need on a project. Uh, text indexes uh, needed for full text search. And if you are storing literally documents, books, articles, or uh, something like this, uh, it's really helpful to have it out of, out of the box in the database. Uh, of course, it can trim stop words and stem the words uh, and uh, work pretty as uh, any other uh, full text search uh, engines. And uh, the last one, and in my view, rarely used uh, is a hashed index. It's needed if you are using well, let's say full advantages uh, of MongoDB and uh, need to boost your queries around the shards. Of course, if you're using hash-based uh, sharding and there are no more cases to use it really. So that's it for 
for index types. Uh, and let's have a look on index properties. Of course, as uh, any other DBMS, MongoDB supports unique indexes. I think there is no sense to describe the purpose of this index, uh, only the restriction here. Uh, it's pretty consistent, but uh, if you need to build unique index on already existing data, you might remember that uh, you can build unique index if you have more than one null value in your collection. I mean, I mean uh, null value in the field. Uh, so for this purpose, you can use uh, next two properties. They are pretty similar, but have some differences. Uh, sparse property can help you to filter only field values in the field, uh, but using partial property, you also can filter the values in the manner you need. It's really helpful if in your application you have such a specific queries uh, for some data with, let's imagine, uh, only one type from the num of some data. It makes sense to build partial index uh, only for this specific type to reduce the index size and achieve better performance. Mm. Also, we have a collation property that literally is a case insensitive property. Uh, there is nothing special to add. Uh, it's really helpful for uh, strings uh, and uh, text indexes. Uh, the only thing you might remember that this index works only with the same collation specified in the query. So let's move to the next. From the version 4.4, uh, was added one more specific index property, hidden indexes. It's needed more for the purpose of uh, debugging and maybe investigation, uh, how the system will work without index, uh, just by assigning property instead of removing and uh, building, re rebuilding the index uh, after this debugging and investigation. Mm. And I think it's a pretty cool feature from the newest Mongo. And the last property is pretty interesting. Uh, it gives us the ability to remove indexes uh, with the associated documents after the time specified and time to leave property. Uh, it's pretty helpful, I think, uh, if you need to build storage for some temporary data like logs, uh, user sessions, uh, events, and etc. So we briefly uh, reviewed a lot of information about indexes in MongoDB, um, but also we need to understand how to deal with uh, all of this stuff in an efficient way. On this slide, I pointed some of best practices that should help you in your everyday work. Of course, it's not a comprehensive list, uh, but I think a good start point uh, of making Mongo indexes more productive. Oh, let's start from the most common things. I mean, using appropriate indexes and uh, removing uh, uh, removed uh, unused ones. Basically, these rules can be applied to any database, but especially to MongoDB. As somebody said, you need to create uh, all the indexes your application really needs for solving the most frequent queries. Not one more, not one less. Uh, and for understanding which indexes are really using and how Mongo utilize them, uh, you can use uh, MongoDB Compass. Uh, it's, a, it's an application, it's a UI for MongoDB uh, where you can 
look at uh, explanation of your queries to see index indexes utilization and uh, also indexes stats. Uh, the next thing is more specific for Mongo. It's uh, covered queries. Covered query is a mechanism of getting the data directly from the index if there are no more fields specified in query. Uh, so let's go to our example and look at what it means. In the example, we have uh, the collection of events and two indexes, one compound and one single field. Uh, so if you only need for some reason to get only event type and event date, you can use projection to specify the output fields and the MongoDB engine will use the index as a data source without using the collection itself. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, okay, let's switch back. Uh, of course, uh, you all have the experience when you're coming on a project and see that really huge code base, uh, a lot of indexes specified in collections and uh, some queries are pretty slow and you need to optimize them. Uh, it's a point to say Mongo directly to use particular indexes uh, without picking it by its internal algorithms. So here hints can help you. Also, you might know that MongoDB really likes to use memory, some kind of uh, Chrome browser from the databases world. Um, and if you are using sort operations uh, and it expecting more than 100 megabytes uh, won't be enough. It's a default memory size for sort operation. Uh, you need to use a low disk use uh, for saying Mongo that uh, it can utilize file system, I mean, temporary files uh, for these searching operations. Uh, so let's go next. Yeah, if you are familiar with Mongo and uh, indexes, uh, you may hear that sorting with using indexes is uh, boosting up your performance. I don't want to say that it's true or false, uh, but you of course may be sure that indexes boost up the sorting in this way. Uh, but there is some pain point that you might face with indexes and sorting. Uh, as I several times said, Mongo stores indexes as a B3 and uh, it is the reason why the orders matter for compound indexes. Uh, let's uh, go to our example and look what we have for it. We built our indexes with uh, a standing order for both fields. Uh, so these indexes will work if we need to sort uh, both fields in ascending order. Uh, also, it will work uh, on inverse order I mean, if both fields are ordered descending in the query, but if we wanted to sort event type in ascending and event date in descending, uh, Monho will skip the index due to no sense uh, in using it. For achieving a logarithmic time uh, of searching by B3 uh, for this query, Mongo needs to really rebuild all the index uh, and there is no sense to do it. It's a uh, much costly operation than just uh, searching by the collection. And I think uh, for the last one, let's uh, go back uh, to using appropriate index types. And here is uh, one tricky thing about uh, Mongo B trees. Here you can see two indexes, and from the relational databases perspective, they are really different. But if you need both of them in MongoDB, 
it would be better to use uh, only compound indexes. Mm. Is the advantage of using B-tree because uh, even type is a prefix part and can be utilized as efficient as a single field index. It's also acceptable if you have a compound index of three or more fields, but uh, as I previously said, uh, the order is important in this part. Uh, and you know, that's all what I wanted to share with you today. And looking forward to your questions. It looks like I was so brief. Well, to start off, hello, I just wanted to thank you because it was very beneficial, even though it was a brief one, but it was very beneficial and useful. Um, we got a little question to ask. Uh, could you please tell me what about the compound indexes within using the more complex data structures like arrays? Uh, uh, sure, you, uh, as I said previously uh, on maybe this slide, uh, you can use uh, compound multi-key indexes. Multi-key is the indexes for the arrays and uh, it uh, mm, divided arrays to the particular indexes uh, for particular uh, lines, let it be. And uh, you use it as a part as of uh, compound index. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Uh, probably missed that one. Thank you. Thank you for your question. 